Uh, today we stripped down our 2.5 TFSI uh, oil pump uh, from our very own math machine. Uh, those of you who uh, don't know, it's uh, an 8P RS3. So it's the five cylinder engine, it's the, it's the daddy. So what we have here is an oil pump which has variable pressure. It can deliver two forms of pressure. You'll have low pressure mode and you'll have high pressure mode. Uh, the way the ECU manages this is via an oil control solenoid that's on the block, which basically diverts oil into various different chambers on this little flow director valve. So ultimately, when your pump is in low pressure mode, you have a limited mesh between the gears. So I don't know if it's as simple as 50-50, but well, say for argument's sake, low pressure mode, you have 50-50% uh, engagement. So because you have less engagement there, you have less surface pressure. So you have less displacement from the gears. So you're going to generate less pressure. And obviously when the ECU then says, right, let's go into high pressure mode, oil then diverts via from that solenoid again, and it will remove this and allow this to fully retract or fully close. I don't know. I'd be lying to you if I told you. But ultimately what's happening is you're having 100% uh, mesh engagement here, which means that the oil pump will produce its maximum oil pressure. Okay, so low pressure mode, high pressure mode, and that is all basically controlled via a solenoid that's on the uh, on the uh, the front of the engine block, and this uh, flow diverter valve here. What is controlling uh, our maximum oil pressure is just a typical ball and spring design. So all that's going to do is once the pressure overcomes the tension of the spring, the ball then starts to allow the oil to escape from the actual pressure chamber in here and recycle back into the sump. Uh, so that will limit the amount of oil pressure uh, in its maximum mode, uh, or high pressure mode if you want to call it that. That will, uh, that will basically limit it. So what we're going to try and do is figure out how to get maybe 70 psi or maybe 80 psi of oil pressure. Uh, so typically you would then modify your pressure relief valve here. So one of the many ways you can do it is the pikey way is you just simply stretch the spring uh, and then you know we need to make a test rig and see how the uh, the oil pump behaves. Another technique is probably better is to leave the stock length of it but run a smaller spring on the inside which obviously creates a, a stronger spring uh, being a pair so the the flow will allow to get higher before the ball is then forced back causing it to recycle. Uh, so it's actually quite a simple, simple uh, bit of engineering. But you know, this the problem with the low pressure and high pressure mode is when you have a hybrid turbo, uh, or in fact any high performance turbo that where the spool is incredibly quick, uh, you're going to have a tremendous amount of load on your bearing shells. Uh, your crankshaft bearing shells. So we have the big end and your mains. So what's happening is because your oil pump is still in low pressure mode, uh, you are basically having a lot of torque beating on those uh, those bearing shells, uh, which is really squeezing the oil out of them, which is obviously going to start to hurt them. Uh, so what I've done, uh, tie it up to yourselves, I've disconnected that oil control solenoid that's on the block. So basically the oil pump will always operate in high pressure mode. Uh, therefore we have maximum oil pressure at any given time, rather than you know the the torque beating on these bearing shells, and then the oil pump then goes into high pressure mode, giving you as much pressure, as much dampening uh, as you like uh, on those bearing shells. So, just give you a little tour of it. So obviously that's the end cap there. You've got the little nub uh, on the end of there, which moves backwards and forwards inside here during its high and low pressure mode cycling. And obviously you've got the bearing or the bush. And for here, that's spinning in there. Don't forget, guys, that this doesn't move backwards and forwards. It's this that does. That uh, is just spinning away, connected via your timing chain. So that's your pulley there for it. And then inside, you've got your uh, your I call it an uh, I don't know your pressure chamber or something. Uh, so in here, that's connected to your. Uh, timing chain and then this side here is the chamber which allows the sliding motion of this call it a, an intermediate gear because this just spins this isn't actually connected to anything that's just like an idler gear so there you go guys nice simple bit of kit uh, but yeah just be careful when you're running big power and you have a variable oil pressure pump it's always worthwhile uh, measuring oil pressure. There's no point waiting until the engine light or the oil pressure light comes up on your dashboard because by then it's too late. Your engine's fucked. 
So uh, any performance build that we build, uh, or even for myself, first mod that we ever do, uh, even mapping the car to stage one is fit an oil pressure gauge. Know what is going on with your oil pump. Know what is going on with the oil pressure. If there's anything problems with it, uh, you'll have a, an early warning indication of that something's not quite right. All right, guys. Cheers.